All right, welcome to our 32nd episode of Atomi Martian Tour Reviews. On this episode, we are reviewing the Masters of the Universe Classics, The Faceless One, the Marvel Select Gambit figure, and Transformers Dark of the Moon Thundercracker. So, don't press stop. First up on the review docket, we got Marvel Select Gambit here. Uh, this is a roughly 7 inch scale figure by Marvel Select. Now these are pretty cool because Marvel Select has decided to make them all about the same scale, true to, sc ah, true to size on the characters and true to size with the other characters in the Marvel Select lines. Uh, let's look at the package real quick. Pretty standard for Marvel Select. We have the character right here, his little trademark playing cards to signify who, what he does. Gambit written on the side. If you hold it and put it in your bookshelf, you can see it's Gambit. And then on the back, it gives you a quick little bio of the character. And it also shows you them in a little action pose. Pretty cool. Let's open them up. We got the Danger Room display base. Let's take that one off. Ooh, several sections for this guy. Save that for later. And Mr. LeBeau himself. Cool, cool. Looks pretty nice. Ooh, nice new figure smell, too. Cannot beat that. Let's see. We got some playing cards wrapped in tape. Yuck. Seriously, get off my fingers. Hey, come on out. We got some cards mid throw for each hand and extra hands. This is like the probably the most accessories I think I've ever seen a Marvel Select for your combo. That's a big plus there. And it looks like we got, we got an extra right hand. Ooh. And oh, two extra right hands. So uh, lefty gets no love. All right. But they are slightly different. Okay, cool. The figure looks really good. Nice paint apps. The hair looks super cool. Very 90s look. Very kind of Jim Lee. Um, I'm not the biggest Gambit expert in the world, but I'm pretty sure this is the same costume he wore through most of his career. Uh, trench coat and then some weird techie stuff. <laughs> but it looks really cool. I like it. i uh, always been a big fan of the look of this guy. And this is, like I said, pretty true to form on the character. He looks just like he does in the comic books. Yeah. And you've got some really nice detail here on the trench coat. Brown, and then they do the black shading on there. Uh, nice ab crunch on the figure. Good articulation all over. Uh, looks like he's got the swivel on the bot on the shoulders. Swivel, maybe yeah, a little tight, but swivel at the biceps. Uh, and then an elbow joint, and he can rotate his hands all the way around. Ab crunch, thighs, and. This is nice. Instead of giving those little swivel ball joints at the knees, they actually give them just a straight, you know, through peg. And then his feet can move. So, pretty good articulation. You get some nice poses with it. Just move it around however you want. Let's see what we can do with this base. Okay, cool. All right, we've got Gambit out of the package. We've got his Danger Room display put together, and we got the figure already. Now, uh, that is a big feature of this line of the Marvel Select figures is they come with the Danger Room display, this guy right here. And this is cool because it's the classic Danger Room display, not the modern stuff because the modern stuff is pretty much all holograms. This is the classic where little panels open in the wall and a saw comes at you or, you know, whatever. If you're Wolverine, a bunch of gunshots come at you. If you're Gambit, a concrete wall comes at you and throw cards at it, whatever. But this is the cool display it comes with. And the figure itself comes with uh, Gambit, of course. He comes with not one, not two, but three separate sets of cards. Uh, he's got these two ones where it's like he's throwing them at you, and he's got one set where he's just 
holding it and charging up the cards. Very cool. That's a neat accessory if you ask me. And also it comes with three sets of hands. Three sets of right hands, I should mention. He has these open kind of splayed hands, and then two sets where he's just kind of... Well, if I can get this thing to stand up, just sit right there for me. He's got these two sets where they're kind of half open, not really. And we'll show you those. And then, that's not bad, but I thought it was kind of weird that he comes with all those right hands, two that are practically the exact same, and only one left hand. Only one left hand to hold the staff, which it's not really doing very well. Uh, if I angle it just right, it will sit in there, but there's not really, it's too thin to stick in here. So that's just a little bit I'm noticing. Other than that, the figure's really great. He's going to be perfect to just sit around and display. And he's got an amazing amount of detail, so you can really, it'll blend in with all of your figures and stand out perfectly on his own also. And with the cool little danger room display, you can set it all in there. Pretty neat guy. And like I said, he's got all the extra accoutrement that Gambit should come with. So, here's Remy LeBeau. If you like what you see, go pick one up. I highly recommend it. All right, next up we have the Masters of Universe Classics, The Faceless One by Mattel. Now this figure is a, uh, well, it's a Masters of Universe Classics. It's a adult collector on here. Um, the box is a basic Masters of Universe Classics box. On the back it has this little bio here. Um, some other figures in the line, and also the ever so important air holes that Mattel always has to include with all the figures. All right, now this character actually wasn't part of the original Master of the Universe series. Um, he was um, created for the 2002 cartoon uh, reboot. So this figure is sort of a um, classic interpretation of a modern character um, as opposed to a modern interpretation of a classic character like all almost all the other ones are so i don't know i think it looks pretty awesome so let's open them up and check them out all right here is the faceless one out of the package now the faceless one is actually evil lens father and um he is immortal um but through a horrible curse from king hiss he um has face removed and he's kind of undead now um he does come with the havoc staff um it's the same havoc staff that Skeletor eventually gets and he has a um, Ramstone here that has magical powers in, in it um, So that's a little bit of a bio of the faceless one. He's not really a bad guy. But he's not really a good guy either He's kind of I don't know, a little bit in between, you know Everything um, the actual figure though um, the shoulder pads and the the neck part is actually removable And it's a three-part shoulders uh, the shoulder pads are connected to the, the whole collar, chest bone area here. Um, giving it a little bit of posability and move, movement. So when you have it on the figure, you can move his arms and stuff like that, and it actually moves with the figure, which is a, a cool effect. Um, the actual figure has, of course, the belt with like these garb things hanging down. I, I can't remember the name of them, um, sorry. And then, of course, his um, sort of face, face, Face almost. I mean, he has like an eye sockets and and a mouth and nose and stuff like that. So he's not completely faceless, but he doesn't have any detail to his face. So you don't know what this guy looks like. You know, he looks like uh, he looks like those aliens from Area Fifty One. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> but the head's a little small. Yeah. <laughs> um, as far as color goes, he has a black and purple with a little bit of pink or uh, darker purple highlights. Um, I don't know. I think this figure looks awesome. Um. But really, he he's really set off when you when you uh, when you put his armor and his like football gear on. <laughs> you know, it really kind of makes the character look stand out and look look awesome. Now this isn't a, a well known character. It's kind of um, more of an obscure character. Um, like I said, unless you watch the um, the cartoon reboot that came out in the early two thousands, you probably aren't familiar with this character very much. Um, he's not like a classic like uh, Trap Jaw or or He-Man and, and stuff like that. Um, but overall, the sculpt from the Four Horsemen looks absolutely amazing, um, very well detailed. Um, pretty much everything you come to expect from the Four Horsemen. Um, as far as posability goes, um, you can move his, um, he has some um, hip posability, waist posability, his knees bend, his ankles bend, uh, back and forth, uh, side to side a little bit. Of course, his arms, shoulders, everything. Um, almost all the posability you, you come to expect from a Master Universe Classics figure. 
And overall, the detail and the sculpt look great, and they definitely um, they definitely made a obscure figure and an obscure character um, I can't miss. And I would highly recommend if you haven't already ordering one of these, um, go ahead and order another one, or or hope and pray that they re reissue this figure soon. So, all right, the faceless one. Next up for reviews, we got Transformers Dark of the Moon Thundercracker. Uh, now this figure is not from the movie. Well, I mean, it's a movie line figure, but Thundercracker isn't in the movie, uh, as any fanboy probably already knows. But uh, this is a good looking figure, as you can see on the back of the package. Super cool. I think he looks better than the Starscream does. Uh, this is the Deluxe Class Transformers figure. And I believe it is a level 2 intermediate for the transforming. So that means that you only need to have a bachelor's in engineering to figure this thing out. Uh, on the back they give you a little bit of a bio about the figure. Of course they show you the figure both in robot form and back in vehicle mode. And I'm trying to think of anything else other than just some shameless plugs for transformers. Here on the side technical data, strength, and all the little personal facts about your uh, favorite new robot. So it's let's not open some NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, this is the first one. That's right. I should mention this is the first Transformers figure from the movie that is not from NASCAR. Hence, no wig and no NASCAR hat. <laughs> All right. Uh, this is part of the Mech Tech line, which means it's got a weapon that does the little action action stuff. This one's a laser and a chainsaw. But enough about me, Gavin. Uh, let's open this thing up. All right, we have Thundercracker in vehicle mode out of package. Very cool. He's got the red, white, and silver, so almost patriotic colors going on here. And he is the F-22 Raptor jet. Very cool, very new. Um, little things to notice on this figure. The flaps come down right away. And he's also got landing gear, which folds right up. That's just something I've always liked since I was a kid. And he also has this weird sword weapon attached. Uh, I think it's because it belongs to him in robot mode and they just couldn't figure out anywhere to put it so they just stick it on there. But it doesn't make a big difference. I just thought that was worth mentioning. And of course, we have our mech tech weapon, which goes somewhere. All right, so this is the basic figure in, uh, in vehicle mode. So let's uh, transform into robot mode. Okay, we now have Thundercracker all transformed. And uh, he's all transformed. And it kind of looks like a stunted turkey. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like this huge, you know, upper body and everything. And then these, like, tiny little legs. It just looks so weird. <laughs> you know, this is, um, Starscream was always one of those characters in the movies. I was always, like, I always thought the movie designers really dropped the ball on him. Because uh, of everybody that they really need to make look cool, they effed him up royally. <laughs> but, um. That being said, this still looks about 100 times better than the Starscream figures do, just because of the paint job. So uh, I've got him transformed here. He's got some uh, elbow articulation, and you can also have these little ball joints here that you can get him to, like, you know, do the conquer the world kind of pose and stuff, which is pretty neat if you ask me. Uh, he comes with this cool sword that attaches right to the side of his arm. I'll take that off. Just pops right off, it has a peg on it, put it right back on. Maybe. Yeah. And that way you can stab people like Optimus. I've got his mech tech on the other side. Pulls out to a chainsaw. I really wish that there was a way to make get that to stay in the chainsaw mode though, because that would that would just be really cool to have in a fight scene or if you're just putting them on display and have them cutting through somebody. But uh that's all you know, it's not the end of the world and when he's not doing the mech tech weapon, it's just a regular blaster. So that's pretty cool. Uh, the head doesn't really turn around or anything. But he's got that crazy, uh, I can't figure out if it's a robot or an insect look on him. Alright, so... I don't know how I feel about this figure. He looks kind of weird. He's got some nice articulation. He's got some cool poses. He's got some good points. He's got a lot, he's got a lot of movement. He's not bad. Um, I guess... If you're really a big fan of the movie stuff, I'd go pick him up because he is a pretty accurate representation of like uh, what Th Thundercracker would look like in the movie. Uh, if you're a big fan of G1 kind of stuff, I don't know if I'd recommend getting this figure. But uh, I think it looked pretty cool on my display at home with my uh, number 88 car. You know, 
He could be lying down. Number 88 will be on top of him. And I'll have a little Dale Jr. figure over in the corner with the bottle of uh, Coca-Cola or whatever the hell they drink at the end of those races. And be like, yeah! And, you know, you'll have Thundercracker over there lying dead. It'll be nice. It'll be a nice scene for everybody. I can uh, drink a Pabst Blue Ribbon with that scene right there. So, uh, yeah. There you go. Thundercracker from the movie. Check him out. All right, that has been another exciting episode of Atomic Martian Toy Reviews. Uh, don't forget to check out our sponsors with Big Bad Toy Store, RadarToys.com, our affiliates of TenaciousToys.com, um, T-Shirt Bordello, um, Think Geek. Uh, BBTS? Hmm? BBTS? I already mentioned that. Probably. And um, I don't know, a bunch of other websites or whatever. Check them out. They're all awesome. Um we reviewed uh, the Thundercracker, the Faceless One, and Gambit. Um, so you could check them out and pick them up at whatever your favorite uh, online retailer is or Big Ben Toy Store. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, <laughs> try Big Ben Toy Store. So that's been our uh, 32nd episode of Atomic Martian Toy Reviews. Um, check us out next week. We're going to be reviewing um, probably the uh, Thundercats Lino from Mezco and maybe uh, a Scarabus or two from. The Four Horsemen. So definitely check us out. Peace.